Welcome everyone back to a brand new Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be talking about basically everything you need to know about villager trading. So make sure you do subscribe because this is, you know, a bumper episode of my Minecraft tutorials. But yeah, so I'm going to be talking about the very simple stuff about villager trading to um, the very complex and the quite advanced level things. Um, so, like I said, make sure you subscribe, like, etc. Now, as a quick side note, this is talking about Java Edition Villager Trading. Now, there are quite a few differences between Java and Bedrock Edition Villagers and trading in general. So, if I see um, or notice a difference, I will tell you, but um, be informed if you're going to be doing Bedrock Edition, edition Survival or something like that, then make sure you check up quickly because you might be using a feature that is only in Java Edition but not in Bedrock Edition. I say you'll be wasting your time. Now, villager trading is at its very core quite simple. So, you either use emeralds to get something from a villager, or you use something to get some emeralds from a villager. That is literally about it. Um, obviously, there's some more things going on as well, but we'll talk about this, don't worry. So, first of all, villagers and you as well get experience when you trade with them. So a villager will start off first as a novice, and then as you trade with them, they'll unlock some trades for the apprentice tier. So for a farmer, actually I forgot what a farmer unlocks, I think it's like apples or cake, I forgot. And then if you keep trading with him, then he'll get more experience and become a journeyman, and then an expert, and then a master. So that's quite cool. And you can also get experience from trading with the villagers. And what's quite interesting is that you get more experience from a villager if he's willing to breed so essentially that means a villager would have either three bread or 12 um, potatoes or 12 carrots or 12 beetroots so that is quite an interesting thing so basically if you want to maximize your xp gain from trading just give them you know a sly one to three bread and uh, keep it secret hush hush and bam you get maybe nearly is it twice as much xp um, I'm not too sure I saw the numbers so it's, it's a little bit more but obviously um, as time goes on you get more and more levels so overall it's worth it for you know three bread it's quite easy now let's talk about job sites and this is um, a fairly complex topic or can be but I will try to explain it as best as I can so villagers start off being like this so this is an unemployed guy you see if I try and trade with him he'll just keep um, shaking his head which I don't think villagers do in better condition, um, but I'm not too sure. And essentially what will happen is this villager will be going around roaming for a job site, which can be any of these, and I'll go into them later. And what he'll do is he'll go into or find a job site that he can access, so he can't access this one. And also I think it's being claimed by this guy, and then he will work at it. Now in Java Edition, villagers have like schedules for their days, so... Um, at midnight, they'll be asleep, they'll wake up at a particular time, and they won't go to work immediately. They'll chat to the other villagers, say, hi, how are you doing, how's your sleep, and so on, and then they'll go work. Now, villagers can, theoretically, I'll talk about this a bit later, have jobs without job sites, but the importance of job sites is that this is how they replenish their trades. So, let's use this armor here as an example. So, as you can see here, you know, give me a diamond helmet or a diamond chest plate. Now let's say I have huge amounts of emeralds and I bought his entire stock of diamond chest plates so he can no longer trade with me. Now what he can do is he can go to his job sites and replenish um, his trades then I can buy again his entire stock of um, protection 2 diamond chest plates. So this is very important or his job site is important so then he can replenish his trades and he can only replenish them uh, once a day within his work time. So for example if it's early in the morning and you trade with him, he won't replenish it because he's like, well, this is my socializing time with the other villagers. So be careful of that. So make sure your villager has access to a job site and make sure that, um, well, you can only trade with them a total of twice a day for each um, trade. So for example, if I trade like all of his stock twice for diamond chest plates, I can still buy diamond helmets as well. Now, job sites uh, are one per villager. So they can't share job sites and something else is in 1.16 um, the villager who has the highest um, level gets the job site so say for example these are here are all farmers and 
let's say I've put a composter here, so we have a range from novice to master. Let's say I put a composter. Now these four here won't claim this job site because they're all um, an inferior level to this master here who's a top level top man. So he will claim this job site and work and these lots will be quite disappointed because they have no job sites. Now another important thing to remember is that villagers like this one for example who I haven't traded with at all will not, um, if I break their job site that they have claimed, if they haven't traded with them or they haven't traded with anyone else. They will then go back to unemployed and then they roam around and if they find a new job site then they will change their profession to the correct job type for that job site and then they will continue working. If however I gave even like someone even traded once with this villager he will retain his job type whatever and whenever even if he's killed and then cured he'll still be the same, the same job type and retain the same traits. So again you would know of the librarians who you can just break and keep putting down lecterns to um, get a good trade. This is the same for every other villager type. So now let's finally get into the job sites for the job types. So like I said we have the armourer here, blast furnace. Now the butcher uses a smoker as a job site. The cartographer uses a, guess what, cartography table. Now brewing stand uh, doesn't make a brewer, makes a cleric. Composter for a farmer. Then barrel, yep, barrel for a fisherman. I mean, I don't get the points of fishermen, whatever. Fletching table for a fletcher, and hopefully they add an actual function for this. Then we have a, uh, what do you call it, cauldron for a leather worker, a lectern for a librarian, a stone cutter for a mason. Now, in Java edition, he's just called a mason, but in Bedrock edition, he's called a stone mason. But he can trade, you know, quartz and clay and stuff, so it's not just stone, but either way. Um, loom for a shepherd. And then we have a smithing table, finally it has some kind of function for a toolsmith. And then a grindstone for a weaponsmith. And then we have here, this is the nitwit, my least favourite type of villages, because they are useless. And for his um, sin of being useless, I've given this guy regeneration and wither, so he can keep him getting, you know, in pain, but uh, he won't die until I slay him with my sword. So yeah, nitwits are cool. I don't... Uh, they're waste of furniture, like I said, because in survival, these can be your, your biggest resource. Now, let's talk about some more complex mechanics um, with traders and villagers. So this here is my super villager. He gives me for like one emerald a full netherite block. Now, I won't tell you how I got this villager because it's like a trade secret. Uh, maybe if you subscribe, I will, but um, if you don't, you definitely won't know. So let's talk about some of the more complex mechanics of trading. So first of all, um, the prices fluctuate, but only the first item. So what do I mean by this? So let's say here we have um, this weapon smith. He will sell you a diamond sword, sweeping as two, smite two, for 23 emeralds, which is, you know, that's a fine price. I mean, uh, I don't know. But the price of emeralds can fluctuate. So it can go to all the way down to one, or maybe, you know, 64 um, emeralds for this sword according to a various number of factors which I will talk about later. But what's important to note is that it's only this column here that you actually offer to the villager that changes and fluctuates. So like I said, it can go from 1 to 64 um, emeralds for one diamond sword. But it won't be, for example, 23 emeralds for two diamond swords. So let's get another example here. Let's go to the Fletcher. He will give you 8, uh, or if you give him 8 tripwire hooks, he'll give you an emerald. Now, if he's good friends with you, he'll go all the way down to one tripwire hook for an emerald. And if he hates you, maybe even 64. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but you can um, get quite high amounts of tripwire hooks for one emerald. Now, the thing is, you can't then get two emeralds from eight tripwire hooks. It's only the thing on the left here that changes, not um, the item that you get from the results of trading. So that is an important point to note for fluctuations. Now, what makes the price change? Well, first of all, it is the demand. So high demand is a higher price, just like in real life. So again, uh, let me walk you through how this works. So this weaponsmith again gives me um, diamond swords for 23 emeralds. Now say I had loads of stonks and I had huge amounts of emeralds. I can then buy his entire stock. Now, when he replenishes, he'll be thinking, well, this guy loves my swords, so let me um, get the price a bit higher, you know, so I can get more from it. 
and therefore he will write, uh, raise the price for the demands. Now, to prevent doing this, uh, him doing this, what you can do is you can give him a chance between replenishing um, to realize that you're not really there to trade with him all, you know, all the time. So then he will um, gradually or quite quickly reduce his prices back to what they were before. But this is an important thing to note if you have some kind of industrial visitor trading system. If you keep trading, keep trading, keep trading without giving them a break, then they will eventually, well, the prices will get higher and higher. But at the same time, if, for example, you have a good villager and you're wondering why his prices are going higher and higher, there are other factors which we will talk through later. But it could just be that you're not giving him a break and you just need to stop trading with him for a little bit and then the prices will go back to how they were before. So let's see, what about the other factors? We have the hero of the village. So say you are a really good player, you got a raid and then you smashed them and everyone died so you know those stupid annoying vexes which are far too overpowered and even the ravages are quite powerful but not so uh, anyway I'll talk about raids later um, but then you get the hero of the village award and I believe in Java edition as well you get villages and their specific trades will throw you stuff but also you get quite significant reductions in price as well and you know with more and more hero of the village levels so say you beat another raid was it oh, anyway so so you get high levels of um, Hero of the Village, then the reductions are higher and higher and higher and so on. Now the thing to note with Hero of the Village is obviously it is only a temporary effect. I think it's 20 minutes. Um, so don't get excited if you get good trades and you have Hero of the Village on because in 20 minutes again you'll be super upset and don't blame me when you're crying. And the last factor is uh, reputation. Reputation is... Um, complex topic but I'll try to put up a table of um, various things that change your reputation from the wiki so there are things such as killing a villager will make them very upset and if they're upset then the prices go up things like hitting a villager also um, makes them upset and I believe killing iron golems but I'm not too sure now the important thing with reputation is that if you get a reputation of below minus 15 then iron golems that are spawned by these guys will become hostile to you and whack you and they are tough tough creatures so you don't want that but at the same time you can um, advance your reputation and this is done by um, well the way I do it is by curing them so I have a video on this, it's actually my most popular video about curing villagers so what you need to do is you need to get them to a zombie villager or you need to find a zombie villager lob a splash potion of weakness at them and then give them a golden apple and then slowly but surely they will, I think the term is vociferate and they will turn into a villager but not only that, a villager who will love you and reduce his prices for you and in Java Edition as well you can further reduce his price to um, an absolute minimum and have it stay at a minimum really by again converting the villager to a zombie villager and then curing him a total of five times and that way you can get your prices to uh, be at a low so yeah i think that's all there is really to villages and trading i will talk about the actual good trades in another video because otherwise that would be a long long video should i hear a baby villager no i think it's just this guy so yeah um thank you for watching thanks to um economics the cartographer for giving me a really good um trade and these are good i mean imagine you get that village in survival i mean this is obviously i've got that vision in survival um but yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoy uh, subscribe and stay safe. Goodbye.